Hey guys, good morning from New York City. Welcome. Uh, we've got this super special session today on gaming and uh, GameFi and analytics. Um, really exciting stuff. I was just talking to Alex a little bit before this, the start of this talk. Uh, he is a gamer and so, um, and he's been dabbling pretty significantly with GameFi. So there's a lot uh, he has to share with us. He was just telling me some names of some games that I didn't even know. And I'm starting to look them up right now. Uh, and um, once I hand over the controls to him, I'm going to start to check out those games in parallel uh, with uh, listening to what he's saying. So I'm very, very excited here. Just uh, 30 seconds of updates. One, if you're not part of our Slack community, please join. And we do early, really early announcements for a lot of events and a lot of events get kind of uh, uh, RSVP out, like they, they get sold out. Um, so join our Slack, we do a lot. It's very educational, check it out. Um, the recording for this session will be available on blockchain101.com. Just go up to the video section here. Um, and here's actually a link to join the Slack as well if you, you'd like to check that out. Um, um, so if you uh, can't make all of it today or want to come back and listen to Alex again, um, uh, I recommend that uh, you go back and check out the videos. We'll have all our videos there. Just go in, it's a free login. Um, so that's available. Okay, so uh, I'm now going to hand over the controls to uh, Alex Cooper, who is part of uh, Footprint Analytics. Uh, which is a great company. We hosted them before here. They're, they're building an amazing, amazing analytics platform. Um, and there's no better way to understand, understand what's happening in a specific space than to look at the analytics in that space, right? So, uh, but what Al Alex is gonna do for us is explain what GameFi is, give us some examples, maybe tell us how we can make a little money, um, all that, how to have fun, and then look at the analytics and uh, find angles and opportunities. So Alex, the, sh the the uh, floor is yours. Um, go ahead and share your slides and welcome. Hey, um, thanks for having me. I, you can hear me okay? Great. All right, hey everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to the presentation today. My name is Alex Cooper. I'm the community manager here at Footprint Analytics. I hope you guys are having a nice day. Uh, today we're going to do a presentation to help understand GameFi and GameFi analytics. Uh, GameFi is a new and emerging industry in the blockchain space. Okay, so in this presentation, there's going to be a couple of demos. We're going to go over some of the dashboards on our website. All right, and then uh, we can go from there. So. <clears throat> I'll give a little content of what we're going to go through. Um, we're going to give a little background on the GameFi. We're going to talk about GameFi's current state and the analytic statistics, uh, the most popular games in the industry and why, um, issues with adoption currently, and what's needed for the future, and the questions to ask a project's team. If you're ever there for an AMA or anything like that, what questions do you want to ask? <clears throat> so this leads us to the question, what is GameFi? <clears throat> GameFi is a result of combining traditional gaming and decentralized finance. GameFi uses NFTs or non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrencies in game to provide economic incentives to users. These NFTs and cryptocurrencies can later be traded for fiat currency and GameFi falls under two categories, pay to earn and play and earn categories. <clears throat> um, the game is available to play on most chains with the Ethereum chain holding the largest share of available games at about 36.23%. <clears throat> so now we're going to dive into the actual history of GameFi, how it started, um, kind of the background on it. <clears throat> so the term GameFi was originally coined by Andre Conch, uh, the founder of Yearn Finance and uh, many other protocols about 10 years ago. Actually, recently, Andre and his business partner, Anton Nell, um, they actually just announced a retirement from the blockchain scene. So it's pretty big news, actually, because those guys were uh, kind of the pioneers. <clears throat> anyway, so um, and I'm sure all of you guys have heard about the DeFi summer and the explosion of cryptocurrency in DeFi protocols. So let's see GameFi in its current state. <clears throat> In June last year, the TVL figure exceeded the $60 billion mark and peaked at $86 billion in May. After the DeFi summer, new user rate did go down, but is now more stable and growing at a constant rate. <clears throat> now, let's talk about the statistics of GameFi. <clears throat> 
Um, in this section, we'll talk about the indicators to look for when looking for a new GameFi project, what chain runs the best for GameFi projects, and the fundraising behind GameFi projects in general. <clears throat> so a growing trend of the GameFi market, okay? So by comparing active users and new users, we can calculate new user percentage. And it shows us, ga it shows us GameFi exploded in the new year as you can see right here on our chart, it exploded in the new year. <clears throat> um, and then it's dropped now to more of a stable level, as you can see here. <clears throat> Therefore, this means people are still playing and will continue to play. Uh, but we kind of just weeded out the players that were just around to, you know, check it out sort of thing. <clears throat> so our next statistic is <clears throat> the share of market gamers. This is important because we can see what chains gamers are using. <clears throat> you can see here, we got Wax, Polygon, BSC, EQS, DEP, Ronin, et cetera. <clears throat> with more active users, or especially with more active gamers, a project and a chain is more likely to have a longer lifespan and consistent better rewards. We can see that the Wax and Hive <clears throat> chain occupy 50% of the gamers, which can also mean that these chains are more user-friendly for beginners or have you know, a lower barrier of entry to get started. <clears throat> so after checking the major indicators, we're able to answer the questions when it comes to fundraising. Most projects are still are in seed or pre-seed rounds, which tells us GameFi is still in its infancy stage and capital is rushing into the industry. So that means we're early investors in this ever-growing and potentially huge industry. All right, so right now at Footprint, we have parsed 10 public chains with four more to come. With this, we're able to deduce that BSC is catching up to Ethereum by a number of GameFi protocols. <clears throat> you can see right here on this chain, our <clears throat> Right here, you can see uh, BSC and Ethereum. <clears throat> um, by volume, Ronin is the first, which uh, Ronin runs Axie Infinity, which is a super popular game in the Philippines, uh, followed by the Harmony Chain, which runs DeFi Kingdoms. Um, again, another super, super popular game. Um, and then BSC. This is good for you if you haven't decided what kind of chain you wanted to play on. Yeah, but you want to play on something established and with a community behind it. Remember, different chains don't really affect gameplay, but if a chain isn't optimized, it can hinder user growth. So let's go to our website here and show our dashboard. So as you can see, uh, we have new users. BSC has the most new users in the last 24 hours with 36,000. And they also have the most active users and currently the most total users of the chains we parsed. So now if you wanna go here and you wanna see new user percentage, Ethereum, you can see Ethereum, BSC here. <clears throat> as well, you can check out the total users by chain. So BSC has 80% of the total or 88% of the total users, Paul followed by Polygon with 8%, et cetera. And then you can see the growth of total users per chain where BSC again is blowing everybody out of the water. <clears throat> so now the next step is to show how we show the winners of each chain. Now this information is good to know so you can find the most popular games per specific chain. <clears throat> From there, we can compare the most popular games against each chain to find the one that appeals to you. So for example, we're gonna use BSC as the winner of our chain here. Let me go click. <clears throat> and you see this dashboard here has a GameFi users overview for BSC. And we can see their trend, the daily ranking of games. So let's see, Moblox has the most active users in the last 24 hours with 46% followed by Second Life bomb crypto, et cetera. And then we can also check out the daily rankings. Now, what I like to do is I like to sort it by most active users to see who's actually playing because I don't care really about 
who has played. I care about who's playing currently. So we check out, we got Mobox, Second Life, Bomb Crypto, etc. Now let's say that, you know, you didn't want to just check out the BSC chain. Well, we go here, get rid of this. Let's put on Ethereum. And now we've updated so that we have our GameFi users overview of Ethereum. You guys can check out the games on there as well. And you can see Mirandis is the most popular. Now that game is pretty cool. I do recommend you guys check that out. <clears throat> now we'll go on to our next one. So, <clears throat> so let's talk about now, moving on, the metrics for user analysis and what they mean. We'll talk hey, about user hey, trends. Hello? Alex, just, yeah. Hey, just good question. Um, yes. Can you show us some games? Like what, just show us some websites of some games, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, before we get into like down the, a little bit more here. I got, oh, you got uh, some games? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're going to cover that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I want to see yep. some games. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Let me just go back here. All right. So we'll just go about the terms and then uh, after that we can go and talk about some games. <clears throat> so we'll talk about the user analysis of each game file, user trends, new and active, user retention, which is cool. It's a unique analytic, um, only at Footprint Analytics, and then the relation with token prices and users. <clears throat> So what do these terms mean in Gamefly? So new users is the unique wallet addresses which interact with the protocol for the first time. Active users are the unique wallet addresses which interact with the protocol for a certain period of time, including new users. Okay, that's big. And then the new users percentage is the percentage of new users among the active users. <clears throat> So let's talk about now the relationship between the token address and the holders. Here we can examine the relationship between the active holders with the number of transactions and the number of tokens. <clears throat> you can use this to help predict the longevity of a project. So we'll use Star Sharks as an example. Okay, so by able to by be able to tr um, go over the transactions through each address, we're able to get a better understanding of how their economy works. <clears throat> and about how their token works, because the more you know about the, how their tokenomics works, the better you can understand how a project's lifespan is gonna be, okay? So as you can see here, we use the C token from Star Sharks. It's got the 24 hour mint of 280, and it burned almost 900,000 of their tokens. This helps stabilize and <clears throat> make it so that these, uh, protocols they don't have too much or too crazy of economics and then fall into a irreversible death spiral if say too many people sell <clears throat> so next we'll go multi-chain multi-token game five <clears throat> so now we can analyze game five running on multiple chains with multiple tokens to get a more accurate overview of the project so to give a little background about this a lot of projects now are releasing two token tokenomic systems. This helps give a governance system for staking as well as a reward to help <clears throat> users um, cash out of their tokens or swap them for other things. Now with protocols with two tokens, right? That means there's more tokens to take or to keep track of for active users. So by able to monitor both um, tokens, we're able to get a more accurate overview of the, the users on the protocol. So now let's talk about the state of GameFi and the two most popular games by active users according to Footprint Analytics and what these games are doing right to retain user retention. So these two games are Splinterlands and Alien Worlds. Uh, personally, I've been playing a lot of Splinterlands lately. I think it's quite fun. Um, but so let's, first of all, let's talk about Splinterlands, okay? So why is Splinterlands so like the most popular? Well, one of the reasons is it's simple and varied gameplay. You know, every time you play a game, it's only about two to three minutes. And if you just want to skip to the results and not go through the battle, you can do that as well to be even faster. Um, the game has a low barrier of entry. So with players needing only $10 in the stable coin to participate and earn the or have the ability to earn in game. So for Splinterlands, you pick up the Summer Spellbook for $10, and then you can start earning daily rewards, etc. Now you can also play the game for free 
but you don't get any of the options for the rewards or the token from their website. Next is the card NF NFTization. So Splinterlands NFTs, uh, various cards to increase card liquidity, solving the problem that some cards do not allow players to trade or sell game assets to other players, right? So big thing to look for in game five games is to see if they'll accept the import um, of your existing NFTs, or they'll allow you to export your NFTs into other protocols. Having that big social aspect is a really, really big green flag on being able to tell if the project has plans for user retention by adding that social aspect. <clears throat> All right, and then there's the Splinterlands of tokenomics. As I said earlier, um, a lot of uh, GameFi protocols are releasing two tokens. So same thing as Splinterlands. So Splinterlands has a two token tokenomics model. The game uses SPS and DEC. So SPS is used as a governance token whose value represents the value of the game. The role of SPS is mainly for community governance voting, in-game rewards, and obtaining pledge rewards. DC is mainly used for in-game purchases of various card packs, props, lands, improving personal rankings, etc. And Splinterlands also has a staking feature as well with their SPS coin, which is cool. So next we'll talk about Alien Worlds. Alien Worlds is a very pretty, pretty game. Um, it involves around six planets, which each planet is a DAO, and you go from planet to planet and you mine nfts and rewards all right <clears throat> so that's pretty much what alien worlds is it's the leader of the entire wax ecosystem and was the first to introduce liquidity mining to nft games allowing users to earn tlm tokens through nft mining and pledging so why is it popular well replayability factor game has enough variety and options to keep players coming back. I mean, I can understand it feels a little bit like a grind at some times, but there's enough variety with the planets and the NFTs that you won't feel burnt out. <clears throat> and then of course there's real utility. So each player who enters the game gets a free shovel, your free basic NFT, but the ability to mine is low. If you're lucky, you can also dig NFT cards during the mining process. The mine cards can then be exchanged for tokens or fiat currency in the NFT market. So players can participate in mining in a planet world or and win in-game battles to earn TLM and NFTs. Buy and own land on a planet, which you can rent. So what that means is you can buy a piece of land and rent it to other players so that they can mine on your land. And then players can stake TLM and increase the rewards of the planet that they are in. <clears throat> now, the barrier of entry for Alien Worlds is pretty low. Like I said, you just get that free shovel and you can start, but it can get quite expensive quick. Like, I mean, there's certain ships out there that are already selling for $10,000, almost $100,000 for, for some of these lands in this game. So <clears throat> it is quite established and, you know, the barrier entry, even though it is low, can be still a little high. <clears throat> All right, so now this is the big one. Let's talk about <clears throat> the state or when it comes to GameFi or sorry, let's talk about the issues with adoption for GameFi now, okay? So currently as GameFi stands, it's not super popular. And the biggest thing for these developers is how are we gonna onboard traditional gamers to the gaming and the DeFi scene? What are we gonna do? So let's talk about some issues with adoption for those traditional gamers or even for other people that are in the blockchain industry. First one is repetitive gameplay. A lot of these games out there, they don't have enough variety in their gameplay to attract new users. And the game just kind of feels more like a job than a game. You know, um, for example, not say Axie Infinity. Now it's a great game, it's really popular, but you know, you, you're clicking all day right and which can get very repetitive and very boring <clears throat> and is it is it really worth how much you're making to spend the time clicking you know, you got to weigh out the balance right another issue is the barrier of entry established games can cost too much to play for new users and getting set up can be complicated saying you have to bridge funds to your metamask you're dealing with metamask having to make sure you have enough ethereum for your gas fees having to make sure that you swap over for the current token to purchase in-game 
items, stuff like that. It could be a little bit complicated. And for example, if a game that costs too much, uh, step in, run to earn game. Right now, to mint a shoe, to even start running and making money, costs about 14 soul, which is like 1500 bucks Canadian, which is quite expensive if you're just wanting to try something out. <clears throat> and then the last point is, just trust hasn't really been established in the industry yet. You know, people hear NFT, pay to earn, and instantly think it's a scam. I know I try to tell my friends about these games and how you can make money, and all of them are just shut me down, think it's a scam. And it's like, well, you know, it's not. You just have to be educated and learn and look for the red flags, right? So just what this means is just there's more education needed for the community to learn, to understand, to ask the questions, to see the red flags so that, you know, no one is caught up on the few bad projects and everyone's getting caught up on the really, really good ones. <clears throat> so now let's talk about GameFi and what's needed for the future to really um, have or onboard these traditional gamers into the GameFi scene. So what's needed most for mass adoption? Social aspect. I briefly talked about that earlier. What that means is, you know, you need to be able to import existing NFTs. Can your friends play? Is it easy for your friends to play? Can I bring my NFTs over to another game, right? Being able to play with your friends and interact with your friends through multiple different games is very, very unique to the blockchain community, but it's or to the GameFi community, but it's also very essential, right? I want to be able to drag my things from one game to another game with my friends and then vice versa back. <clears throat> it's it, what keeps people playing. It helps those user retention. And then changes and updates to keep existing and attract new players, right? Uh, let's say that there's a game that gets released. You know, the art doesn't look the best, but, you know, you're still playing it because you like the mechanics. If two months, three months go by, and, or even a month, let's say, and the art hasn't changed, no real mechanics have changed, you're just going to get burnt out of playing. But let's say that they release, you know, an update or a game pass with <clears throat> new mechanics better upgraded art it's going to get me interested again it's going to make me want to come back and play it right and then the third one this is honestly the most important one is fun a lot of these games out there you know i'm gonna give it real they just aren't that fun right <clears throat> you know it just feels grindy you spend an hour trying to get set up and you, you know you don't even like the game so when you're looking for game five games i always recommend that you go in looking to have fun first the rewards are just the bonus we're from gaming to have fun right the money that's just that's just extra right so finding fun games you know and that are well developed with a good team behind it it's a little tough right now because we're still in that pre-seed round that infancy stage Right. But, you know, as the future goes on, these games are just going to get more and more money into them and they're going to come out even better. So let's make news to or let's move to the next part. <clears throat> so a lot of projects now are open to questions from the community and host many events in their socials for asking questions. But what are the questions to ask the project team to help identify their potential? Does the project have a traditional game developer behind the project? This is a super important point. How can you make a video game if you don't understand how video games work, right? Just because you can make a smart contract doesn't mean you understand the, <clears throat> the scope or your audience of the, of the traditional gaming. So you have to have an understanding of how the traditional gaming works so you can onboard these new gamers. <clears throat> All right. Um, a project, and then, you know, a project isn't going to do well, and then, uh, sorry, who's going to do distribution? So a project isn't going to do well if no one knows about it, right? And the operation team, uh, operation team background, these are the guys who are making the economics. Economics for a game five project when it's just being released, their tokenomics is the most important uh, indicator of their lifespan. If they mess up on the tokenomics, it, the project will come into an irreversible death spiral and it'll be done and <clears throat> nobody wants that right so we got to make sure who is 
ask who is doing the operations on their background, okay? And the final question is, who's a smart contract developer? You know, are they doing their smart contract developing in-house or are they uh, hiring a third party to do it? I'm of a big believer in that if they're doing the developing in-house and that there's a face behind the product uh, and the face behind the main dev, that's a good flag or that's a green flag or it's a good indicator that these guys really care about the project and that, you know, they will be more willing to help save a project if, you know, you're in a bear market and the growth isn't there. So because in, well, I should, in a bear market, if there's not enough transactions, the team will then have to funnel their own money into the project so that it doesn't die, which, you know, uh, a lot of projects don't like to do this and that's how we get our rug pulls. So always knowing about the team's background is really, really important for indicators to see about the longevity of the project. <clears throat> so that's everything today, you guys. Um, so thanks again for listening to my uh, presentation today. Um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, if you guys have any uh, questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and yeah, again, follow our Twitter at footprint underscore DeFi. Or if you like our dashboards and want to make your own, just go to our website, footprint.network, and start it for yourself. It's free to use, uh, and you can create up to five uh, with just creating a basic account. Um, Jamiel, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a lot of questions. You're not going anywhere. Hold oh, on. Yeah, no, no, oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can we see some games, man? I, I, yeah. I came here to see some games. I want to see some games. Like, can you put yeah, up absolutely. some games? Show us some games. Yeah. Um, it was Check a great presentation. Out. Lots of great content. Um, and we, we will share the slide deck. Um, we'll drop the slide deck in Slack. All right. So, yeah. So, what? So, big time, right? So, what's, what is this? This game is sweet. Okay. So, remember how I was saying, like, the, the thing is for mass adoption is fun, right? Games need right. to be fun. Right. Uh, I was a big believer that an MMORPG with a RuneScape style system, looting system, is what's going to make these. Uh, what kind of system? Uh, like a RuneScape style. Okay, I was it, kind of, yeah. <clears throat> and that's exactly what this game is. And it looks quite good. I'll show you guys the trailer. Yeah. This game is sweet. Whoa. Right. So, so one of the big things I think is the graphics, right? Yeah. Graphics actually look sweet. So this runs on what chain does this run on? Um, uh, big time. I think it runs on Soul. So okay. on Solana. On Solana, yeah. So there's a lot of games on Solana, right? Because of the the transaction rates are all better than they're way better than Ethereum. Oh, tell me about it. When I bought my Splinterland Game Pass, it was ten bucks, and I had to spend eight dollars on gas fees. Yeah. So <laughs> can you? Yeah. So can you? I mean, is this a game that you're actually playing big time? No, I haven't played this game yet because it's in okay. early access. So yeah. I, I've been watching gameplay and I want to do it, but there's only about eight more days left on the beta. Right. Before they close so, it up. So I'm going to play it on release. Okay. So no, you mentioned play to earn and, and um, uh, another one, play as earn or something like that, right? Play and earn. Play and play earn, to, right? Yeah, play and play earn, to earn. Play to so earn. can you show me an example of play to earn and a play to and a play and earn? Can you show uh, an example and what's the difference? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say a good one of pay to earn would be Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity is huge, huge, huge in the Philippines. Mm. <clears throat> Battle Collect Earn. So this game, it's. Oh, let's get out of here. I haven't, I haven't actually played Axie Infinity, but it is more like a. believe for this game here it's uh just a lot of clicking but it's it's really really so that's that's play, to, that's play to earn right right yeah right, and right. i'd say splinters splinterlands right is more of a pay and earn because the rewards you win aren't really all that exciting mm. or that big but let's see if you guys want i'll show you a quick game and it'll only take me a couple minutes <laughs> So By the way, we're going to have uh, somebody else join us from Footprint Analytics. Uh, her name is Shelly. She's going to do oh, a uh, yeah. She's going to do a deeper dive on some of the charts because uh, I just requested a more deeper dive on the charts. Um, yeah, Alex absolutely. is uh, Alex is a gamer. 
Um, and we get um, somebody else to come in and do a, a, a deep dive on the analytics. So, yeah, so this is all right. So this is how you play. So yeah, I'm so going to lose my like Saturday is going to go out the game. window now because of this. So, right, like, this guy's like a tank. This guy right. can attack the units behind it. So it's right. really, really quick. Um, so how much money can you make? Like, like, say you play this for an hour. Like, how much are you going to make? So you don't actually make money through playing. You make money through um, completing daily challenges. Right. And so what does that look like on box. average? So I'll show you. I mean, should, should we quit our jobs or like, what is this? Definitely not. Okay, no, all right, so. <laughs> so you um, see this snipe quest right here? Yeah. I have to win five matches with a sniper on my team and I get this chest. Last time I opened up five chests, I got three potions and 12 of these tokens. So it's not a lot, but I don't really care because the game's fun. I'm having a good time. It's kind of like an easier hearthstone. Right. Got it. Um, okay, so and then on the uh, you know um, uh, play to earn, how much can you make on that? Oh, geez, on this game, if I like, I'm trying to, I haven't even won anything yet. So yeah, but I mean, game, in general, like, what's the data on that play to earn? Play to earn. Um, yeah. Let's take a look. Actually, let's go look. So, so let's take a look at here. So they've had in the last 24 hours, they had over 2 million transactions. Crazy. So, and it, that's even down four and a half percent total transactions. Holy smokes. No. Um, <clears throat> so this is really good. The transactions, this can tell, kind of give you ideas about the earnings and the ecosystem, right? If there's a lot of transactions, means there's a lot of people making money and putting money back into the system. Now, like I said, I haven't, let's see what the price of a DEC is. Token price. Yeah. So their token price, the DEC is worth about 13 cents a token. So not a lot, but it's up. It's up in the last 24 hours, a couple of pennies. So the Shelly, are you there? Yes. Hello. Oh, I'm Shelly. Hi, I'm hi Shelly. Hi. Hello. Okay. Hi. Um, so you're going to cover some more of the analytics. Yeah. I will share something about our platform. Okay, great. So, um, so Alex, stick, stick around. Let me just get um, Shelly to cover some more of the analytics um, and yeah, they'll absolutely. come back to you in a bit. Um, okay. Shelly, are you ready? Uh, yes, um, but I'm going to uh, lock in our platform and then I can share the screen. That's good. Yeah, okay. And let me share the screen with you. Um, now, um, I noticed quickly that there was a question by Richard here. He said, yeah. how do you find new games? How do you find new games, Richard? Go to our website and go to the GameFi Overview Dashboard, and you can see the most popular games on each chain. All right? Yeah, yeah and we have another question from Yuna uh, about gas prices and the impact on, um, you know, the speed of the game. So here, this is a good one, because when I did my Splinterlands, it took me three tries to actually buy the spell book because through the Ethereum mainnet. Um, two times it took too long and the transaction got canceled. The third time I had to pay pretty much the price of the actual summer spell book for it to go through. So I'm paying like 100% gas fees <laughs> through Ethereum. So mm -hmm. if you if you guys want to look through BNB &B chains, you can connect the BNB &B, um, MetaMask. It's a lot lower of gas fees, same as Wax and Hive, really quite low on their gas fees. So <clears throat> do you see, I mean, so do you foresee a chain that is just specific for gaming? Now all these chains are general purpose. Right, Solana, Ethereum, they're all general purpose. You can build anything on it. Is there an opportunity for a chain to emerge that is very, very much centric? Because everything, my computers are centric to gaming. Chairs now, mm -hmm. like my chair is a gamer chair, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know what, why. I, like, I just feel, it feels like the same chair, <laughs> but it's a gamer chair, right? So is there a, a gamer chain? Um, well, truthfully, when it comes to community that I think has the most active community for gamers, is Av 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 Avalanche. Oh, yeah, Avalanche. You guys have gone on the Avalanche, or Avalanche uh, Twitter. 
and just seeing the gamers, they, those guys are tight, 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 always talking, holding spaces. They all have triangles mm-hmm. in their name. <laughs> 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 so, uh, dude, AVAX is a great chain for emerging GameFi. It's really, really popular. A, a lot of people are releasing on GameFi. And then, again, if, by looking at rising number of games, you could look at Binance Smart Chain. They are releasing games like crazy. A cool little game that's on Binance. It's called Block Ape Scissors. It's essentially a more complicated version of Rock Paper Scissors. It's kind of cool. Got it. The, the economics when when you know like these gaming companies are paying people to play games. Like, how do they make money? What's the business model? A lot of the time, it's because they buy. You have to buy in, right? You have to buy in with a lot of stuff too. There's still that barrier of entry, right? Mm-hmm. So they you buy, for Splinterlands, you have to pay the ten dollars, right? And then, so I mean, so their their business model is that they charge you and they hope you they pay you less. Yeah, so that they it's kind of like the insurance companies. They hope that they keep funneling transactions back right. into the game, right? So right. Like Splinterlands, you buy you buy land, you buy loot boxes, buy cards. All this right. all this money goes back in, and they also offer a staking feature, so right. that you can reinvest your SPS or your governance token back into the game to get rewards as well so that right. also helps um keep money and keep a liquidity pool in the protocol so you know let's say someone somehow has a hundred thousand dc just grind in splinterlands that that makes it so that when the guy wants to cash out his hundred thousand dc he can yeah hey alex um there's somebody's complaining about the volume can you move the mic closer to you yeah oh, there. Is this oh there you there you go yeah <clears throat> perfect Sorry, thanks yeah, a little no sick worries. today too. So um, yeah, Alex is under the weather, but still tripping on with us. So thank you, Alex. Um, uh, so uh, I'll come back to the questions. Um, Shelly, are you are we ready to go? Maybe you want to make your screen a little bit larger, like magnify it. Can you uh, can you magnify it a little bit? Um, and then let's let's dig into the analytics. Let's get into um, the details. Like tell us what these charts mean, and you know where do we find opportunities? Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah, it's. I would. I would make it a little bit larger. I, I would keep like, yeah, make it a little bit larger. It's too wide. Um, yeah, you can magnify more. Yeah, just magnify more. Oh, there you go. That's perfect. There you go. Now it's too. Okay. Now it's too wide. So sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, is it okay now? Yeah, but the the news on the right is truncated. So maybe you want to go back to one hundred percent. Oh, okay. Let me let me see. Yeah, just hit control. This? Yeah, that's great. That's, that's perfect. There we go. Yeah, okay. So yeah. we got a lot of uh, dashboards on our analytics. And uh, maybe we can uh, see uh, go through the game file overview first. Right. So, yeah. Sounds like you have a gamer this in the is, background there, too. Yes. Um, from this dashboard, uh, it shows uh, uh, 24 hours new gamers overall. Uh, from the past, this uh, this is a dashboard for the BSC chain. We can see that uh, in, there are around three thousand game, new gamers in the last twenty four hours, and around uh, ten uh, one hundred thousand uh, active gamers overall. And in, to, uh, in total, there are uh, more than seven hundred uh, seven million users in the BSC chain. And then uh, we also can see the daily ranking of gamers of different uh, uh, games. And right, so uh, these are these we... are gamers or these are games? Gamers. Okay. Yeah, and then this uh, this the daily ranking of games uh, by at twenty four hours active users. Right. We can see that uh, Mobox now has the most active users in BSC chain. What is Mobox? Uh, here. Yeah, but what is what is Mobox? Uh, Mobox is a play to earn game in, okay, in the it. BSC chain. Yeah, yeah. This is so a uh, uh, dashboard for game by users overview. Right. Yeah. Got it. And and then from this uh this below this is a. a ranking of daily gamers in the this dashboard and we can click here like uh, the new users and then you can have your own ranking from this dashboard got it yeah. how, how, how do people get to this dashboard like they just go to footprint.network and then just log in and then they can access yes. the dashboard right now right 
Yes, uh, okay. they go to our go to footprint analytics uh, dot network, and then you can find this dashboard on our front page. Got it. Okay. Yes, and we can also have drill down analysis when we see the BSC chain. We can also get the if uh, like just now we we know that M um, um, is the toughest game in this chain, so we can click in. For those of and you then, that are wondering, Mobox is like a metaverse mining game that you can battle and farm NFTs and stake NFTs, etc. Wow. What Mobox is. So you can stake NFTs and then you, you generate a yield on that? Yes. And then you can also uh, battle other blocks and get yeah. the rewards from where I'm there. looking at it right now. Yeah. So Momoverse. So, I mean, so the graphics are improving, right? So mm -hmm. they're getting better, right? much like the, the rest of the video game world. Yes. And we also got an, an address analysis of game file project dashboard. And as you can see, uh, MOBAS there is in one chain. And uh, as the past 24 hours, the new year there's around uh, 65. And then we see a growing chain of uh, this game. And this is also our uh, very uh, feature dashboard. So what is, our, what is this, uh, uh, this, yeah, this user retention analysis? Like, what is this telling us? Like, how do we interpret this chart? Like, uh, what's what's this, M0? Yeah, what's M0, M1, M2? Like, what are, what are these things? It means uh, when users, they come in, uh, for example, uh, the 2021 in May, uh, there are around two, uh, 20, 7,000 users come in the, uh, for this game. And then in, in the next month, there are only 62% uh, of users still right. so you're playing tracking, this game. You're tracking the life of that, that user and for how many months they are active and how, they, how long they stay on the platform. Yes, yes, correct. Got it, got it, okay. Exactly. Yeah, so this is also a feature in our uh, footprint network. Right. So yeah. if you go back up, can you just go back up? Yeah. Sorry. Just go back to the retention thing. So um, we see mm -hmm. um, we see a big. Uh, so March 2022, we see a big improvement in retention, right, from 100 percent to 97 percent, versus let's say mm -hmm. uh, September 2020, 2021, we, it's 100 percent to 50 percent, right? So there's a half the retention, mm -hmm. but here there's a three. Uh, so in March there's a three percent loss. Do you know why that might be? Is it because more people are using it? What, what that could be? Because this is a bit of a, like the, the retention is trending upwards here. Yes, it means uh, maybe they, they attract more uh, regular users who will play the game more, uh, frequently. Right. And maybe they also have uh, some change in their game to attract users to use uh, uh, in the next month. Got it, got it. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, let me just get some questions here. Um, uh, Shelly, mm -hmm. just, just hang, hang tight. Um, I'm a details oriented person. I love charts. I love understanding charts. So um, I don't want to just run through these charts and just read what we can read anyway. I was trying to really interpret these charts so that um, people can go back to them and kind of get some value. Uh, we got a couple of questions here. We have a question from um, uh, Muna. Can you talk a little bit about the geography, demographics, et cetera, about where and with whom some of these games are popular. Where Absolutely. is it catching on? Yeah, like where I is can this? Do that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Southeast Asia, for sure. Southeast Asia is the most popular for these game fight games. So the yeah. reason being is, I mean, for, for us, maybe in Canada and the States, you grind all day and you make 20 bucks. That's not a lot of money, right? right. But down in the Philippines, down in Thailand, that, that's substantial amount of change. Right. So it's really right. helping out these uh, people in the lower income areas of the world um, who, you know, aren't having the most stable jobs. Um, it's helping them make actual money, not what we would consider money, but it's money for them. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> so that's kind of where most of these games like Krabat is really taken off. That's on the Apex chain. That's huge. What's that name Asia. again? Krabata. How do you spell that? K R. Crab. Yeah, oh, crab. Ada. Oh wow. Okay, Krabata. Got it. And so, um, actually, we'll be going to Southeast Asia 
next week. I'm going to Vietnam, uh, right. Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and yes. I'm definitely going to like try to um, meet people that are doing this kind of stuff because it's a phenomenon, right? Just amazing. <clears throat> but um, is it going to create people that are going to be more addicted to games? Because now you're tying financial uh, rewards, and then you know, you, you you know, like is that is that a possibility? Above and beyond the addiction that already exists. Yeah, I mean, yes, but I don't really think the money is there that you would be getting addicted to the money. You'd be more getting addicted to the process, you know? You know, like, it's kind of like how when smokers, when they finish smoking, all of a sudden you see them, you know, try to want to puff on things just as by right. habit. Right. Um, <clears throat> because, for example, these popular games that are grindy, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's not that fun, but they're just addicted to the grind of it, I would say right addicted to just making that 20 bucks a day um <clears throat> it, it, i'll see you see more addiction i think when the games start becoming more diverse and more open world and more peer-to-peer -peer. i think that's kind of when the addiction will start ramping up for these games yeah shelly a question from you for you um uh, from tim i'm going to combine it he's asking two questions um, one is a, where's this data coming from, right? The data points, where are they coming from? And two, um, is it possible to change variables to 24 hour, three days, seven days, month? Um, uh, can you shift like the, um, the access to different, uh, time windows? Yes. Um, uh, for the first question, so the, our data is from on-chain. They are all on-chain data. Yeah. And the second one, and we can change the date, uh, like 24 hours to seven days. Like we can click here and we can duplicate a new chart. And then this one is for 24 hours. And then you can change the time, like uh, seven days by week here. Got it. And this is, yeah. Yeah, so, so the data is on chain. How frequently are you updating your your data stores that are you know because you're not reading from the chain here, you're reading from a database, uh, and that database yes. is being updated. Like how frequently are you updating your database? Uh, it's end of day. End of day, okay. So it's not real time. Yeah. It's twenty four hours potentially. Yes. Delay, yes. Delay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what, what other charts should we look at that will give us uh, some some grasp of what's happening in the game? The, the retention thing is really great. I think that's really, really useful because that really tells you yeah. if GameFi is is holding on or not. And it looks like it is. Yeah. yeah. And we see we can see that uh, we are trying to find some leading indicator for uh, for users and, uh -huh. and, and token price. And we found that uh, the new users and new active users are very important to the token price. Uh -huh. uh, maybe I can show you. So you have a correlation more. between that between the new active users yeah, and the token the price. So now I'm thinking like yes. a trader now. So I'm sorry. Um, I always think about money here. But um, um, Alex, you like money, right? So like, yeah, what? You know. Yeah. What's how do what's what's tradable information here? So uh, you know. So and you, I think you have a type a typo there. The token. Uh, I think it should be an is issuance. Um, but um, so what, what is what data here is actionable from a trade point of view? You said there's a correlation between new well, users. I, I think I think it's really, really actionable is the mint and burn. Right. Because let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about that. Yeah, let's talk about the mint and burn. Mint and burn yeah. is huge, right? Because yeah. the token, it's just like basic economic supply and demand, right? If there's too much supply, not the demand, the token price is going to drop significantly. Right. But what if there's less users? How are we going to control right. this? demand well we're gonna burn them right right reduce supply so every, so, every day most protocols they mint new tokens and then they burn a certain amount if you right. go on the star sharks you'll see um recently that they they burned like two million of their three million tokens in one day and then you can see how the transactions just dropped steadily and then that's more likely due to the fact that they removed the rental system in their game so can we can we so star sharks is a game i'm assuming it's a game mm -hmm. uh tell us tell us the story what you just told us through these charts so you, you where do we see the the sudden burn or the large burn uh, um jelly here we'll pull it up 
Yeah. So we and we click show on you. the token address itself. Mm -hmm. And then it'll bring us to their token on it. Whoa, I see. So that is the uh, the burn. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the burn. So, yeah, but the, what it's putting it. <coughs> but that that graph looks like um, it should be the other way around. <clears throat> so, is that yeah, a is that a drop in the supply or is that that a, a huge drop that, in the supply? So and that then the but then the, they they minted they brought it back up. Uh, and so, do we see a we also oh, we see a correlation in the price on that drop in supply? Well, you can see yes. the amount of holders went down. Yeah, quite significantly. So the so whole they, the, yeah. The so why would the holders go down? Like what 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 what's the psychology of a person who says you know what I need to not hold this anymore? Well, like I said, there's a couple of other variables that are in as well, like the big removal of the rental system. Yeah. A lot of people made tons of passive income by doing nothing, by just renting their NFTs. The minute they take that out, because they don't actually want to play the game. But the minute they take the rental out, they're like, hey, well, we're selling. I don't play it anyways. Right? Is the, is the price data here? I don't see the price data. <clears throat> or um, price data is another dashboard. Okay. But for this one, you can see is the holder. So it has the <laughs> holders go down, the price of the token go down as well. Right. Right. Unless, of course, there's like three big whales. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Oh, so there's there's the drop, right? So you can see that drop there. Um, yeah, you can see the price. The, the price right. just uh, going down. Right, but it goes down slowly, right? It's not a, it doesn't plunge the same way that the burn plunged. Right, we, so that's sudden... why they did that huge burn, right? They're trying to manage in the bear market. Right. Right, yes. because if, if the token price drops too fast in a bear market, there's not enough liquidity. So, so did they announce that burn or was it kind of a surprise? You know, they you have an, announced it on their Twitter, right. official Twitter account. Right, right, okay. Um, any recommendations on what discords to be on, or what you know, what groups to be on to be on top of the game, fly stuff, and kind of get that gossip, that you know, the important gossip, of what's happening. Uh, and then does Footprint Analytics have a, a Discord? Drop that Discord channel uh, link here, please, if you can. Um, yeah, and then, but like any recommended, because uh, there's a lot of people that are DMing and they're like very interested in games, but they're new to GameFi. Um, and so, like, where do we get access to all this information? Uh, how do we how do we, how do we get plugged in so that we know what the latest game is? Because I don't even know what the games are. So what I like to do is, like I said, when I went through the dashboard, I go over the overview for all the eight chains, and then I go down to the bottom, so there's the daily rankings of gamers, and then I sort it by the most active users, and then I look at the hottest games through the uh -huh. most active users, uh -huh. right? Like Mirandus is a game that's got most active users, and it's pretty good. And another uh -huh. thing that can back up Mirandus is it's funded by Gala Games, which is huge in the blockchain industry. So uh -huh. having that big VC behind them, you can also have a good indication that you know there is going to be some sort of lifespan with it <clears throat> got it got it. we have like one or two minutes uh, we have a question um let me just get this question and then maybe we'll wrap it up um shelly if you got some more charts that you think we should take a look at you know the last thing and please feel free to drop links into chat discord and all that um uh, Lynn, if you're here, maybe you want to drop that. Um, so as far as the direction of the gaming business is going, do you see traditional gaming powerhouses companies getting into game five, or do you see a more bifurcation where the two worlds stay separate? They're going to have to. I think these big games are going to be forced to go into the DeFi industry, whether they like it or not, right? right. <clears throat> the minute that these games are getting better and better, and then you actually start making money behind it and you own your in-game assets, that's huge. In traditional gaming, you don't own any of your assets and games, any of your skins, anything like that. You don't own it. Most people realize they can start owning their in-game assets and make them up money, and the game's actually fun and you want to play it. These EA, <clears throat> all these big developers from, they're going to be forced to, to go into the DeFi space, or they're going to they're gonna lose a ton of their audience. Yeah. So, um, so Microsoft's purchase of Activision, is that positioning for, for GameFi? What, what are your thoughts on that? 
to Activision, big gaming Activision, house. Yeah, they did yeah. all the Assassin's Creed. Yeah. <clears throat> or is it more of a metaverse positioning and not necessarily GameFi? I don't know. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I Maybe we, nobody knows and we'll find out soon. But, you know, $70 billion. I mean, it, it yeah. would be the most logical step, right? We yeah. always, as business owners, you always got to look into the future so you don't fall behind. Right. Um, yeah. So, Discord channels that you feel like we, we should, if you want to stay on top of GameFi, what do you recommend, Alex? Well, I recommend um, our one of our great, great uh, partners, um, if, especially if you're in analytics. Yeah, uh, we were partnered with Metrics Dow. Metrics so Dow, okay. Metrics. Yeah, you got to put your mic back on. But mic. Sorry, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There Metrics go. Dow. Uh, Metrics, Metrics Dow, Dow okay. is awesome. They're sweet. Okay. I can plug their uh, Discord. We're actually doing a workshop with them coming up pretty soon. Um, yeah. <clears throat> another good uh, uh, Discord that we partnered with is Research Dow. They own Twitter Scan. Okay. So uh, uh, that one's pretty sweet. Really depends, right? If you're looking, the best advice I can do is. Let's say you look at our dashboards, you find a game you want, go to that game's website and read their white paper straight up. Like that's what you have to do. That's how you're so they have white papers under- too. Yeah, all these games yeah. have white papers. So mm. go and because then you can also understand how the reward system works. They talk about their tokenomics, they understand they talk about how how that they're gonna give back, how they can guarantee their liquidity pool, all this stuff, right? So if you find a game you like. First step, just go to their website and read the white paper. You have to do your own research first, right? And even if someone tells you this game is great, you should still always do your own research first. So biggest thing I say, read the white paper. Most of them aren't too long, three, four, three, four, five pages maybe. Read the white paper and get an actual idea of the project. Then, any, any specific white paper that you thought was like an exceptional thing to read? Yeah, absolutely. Stepin. I like reading Stepin's wallpaper or white paper because the thing is that. S T E P N. Now, okay. Stepin is a run to earn game, mm. and you actually make big money. Mm. My, uh, I'm in the process of minting a shoe now. My buddy, I uh, work close with Dan. He has a shoe. He, his shoe, oh. he picked it up. It was about fourteen hundred bucks, but he ran for about ten minutes. Right. And he made seventy dollars. So seventy bucks an hour. Oh, it's, uh, no, so no, seven hundred bucks. So yeah, four hundred twenty bucks an hour. No, yeah, yeah, four four hundred four thousand two hundred bucks an hour. But no, sorry, mm-hmm. six times seven, yeah, four hundred twenty bucks an hour. But no, but here's the thing that this yeah. shoe has a cool down, so you can only run for ten minutes a day. Oh, I see, got it, got it. And then some of the money that you earn, you have to reinvest it back into the NFT to right. repair it or give it more energy again. And so, oh yeah, so I see they have a white paper and they have a light paper, so that's worth reading. Um, I'm, I'm going to be getting the shoe uh, shoe here really quick because yeah. just based on the math now, it's like two months of 10 minutes of running a day, you make all your money back. Right. And then it's, and two, they haven't even released their rental system or anything like that yet. So as soon as that happens, the price is just going to skyrocket even more. Again, it's not investment advice, just my own opinion. Cool. Okay. We're out of time. Um, uh, uh, I don't know, Lynn, Shelly, if you guys could drop the Discord links, maybe just because we, we, I want to wrap oh, up. I uh, got it's, it it's, here. It's a, yeah. I just want to make sure people have some follow-up resources. Um, and they're looking at metric style. They're looking at step in. I'm definitely going to read the white paper um, this weekend. Check it out. Yeah, sure. Maybe I can oh. stop sharing my screen and then I can drop some links into the... Sure. Yeah, yeah. Feel free. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Yeah. I dropped the Discord link. Alex, you sent that link to me via DM, so just drop it to everyone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Twitter.com. So this is a starting point for everyone who wants to get into GameFi, but doesn't know where to start. This talk hopefully gets you started with some resources, some 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 understanding. We'll drop the the uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I will drop also um, Alex's Twitter on all that. If you want to reach out to him, I'll drop that on a Slack group within the next 10, 15 minutes. All those resources will be there. Um, 
you know, this is a great place to kind of kick off. I would start with looking at the analytics, go and log into Footprint Analytics, and it's free, and take a look at the analytics. Uh, and then that might tell you, hey, what, what you want to focus on. I think that these are early days for some very, very exciting stuff. Um, it's like we're in the Pac-Man days of GameFi. So. <clears throat> Straight up. Straight yeah. Up. Okay. Um, with that, I thank everyone for joining us this morning uh, or your afternoon or evening. Either way, it's still a Saturday, mostly for everyone. Thank you for spending time with us. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Alex, what's your contact info? Can you drop your Twitter? Yeah, absolutely. I dropped it in the chat there for everyone. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Twitter slash footprint underscore DeFi. Okay, great. That's your that's your Twitter? Yep, that's our uh, footprint analytics. Okay. So All that's right. where you can talk to me. That's where if you guys got any questions or anything like right. that. You're, you're managing that account. Yes, sir. Okay, so great. So you guys Perfect. can talk to me directly there. Okay. Fantastic. Somebody's asking about if you smoke uh smokeless cigarettes no i'm just sick okay yeah he's sick so uh he shouldn't even be here with us he should be resting so let's let's let let's let alex rest alex thank you so much for your time shelly thanks for your time lynn thanks for arranging this and putting all this together thank you so much the recording of this will be uh, available in a couple hours blockchain101.com have a great uh day or evening or night everyone else thank you Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank we'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys.